Shalom and welcome to Bible Stories as Blueprints of the Soul, your Biblical Hebrew podcast. Shalom and welcome to our Biblical Hebrew podcast. Today I would like to speak to you about Genesis 36. But before we speak about several verses from this chapter, I would like us to go into a mindset that we shall meet in this chapter. The Bible tells us in general about two twins, Jacob and Esau. Jacob was born second, Esau was born first. Later in their lives, they gain new names. Esav will be called Edom, Edom, and Jacob will be named Israel. And those are not just private names, Edom and Israel. Those are concepts, while Edom refers to the tree of knowledge, and Israel refers to the tree of life. This is a general frame to our conversation. Edom comes from Adom. Adom is red, color red. So Edom is the color red, Adom, but with additional Vav. The value of Vav is Six. In verses 31 until 39, we meet a list of seven kings that train in a dome. Usually people think that this list refers to kings that train in a dome 5,000 years before our times. But the sages are coming and telling us that the Bible is not a history book. And the kings, seven kings, which appear in this chapter, are former or our primeval instinct, which is printed in us. And I will explain this sentence. Verse 31, and these are the kings that reigned in the land of Edom. Land, as we said before, is not just Eretz, Eretz Edom, land of Edom, but the will of Edom. The will of Edom is self-centered, as we shall see. Before there reigned any king over the sons of Israel. Why does this verse open and mark, and in a way marks the way and describe that those seven kings reign upon the will of Edom before there is a king to the son of Israel? The sons of Israel are not physical human beings about the concept. The concept which says that a person has a head and he can connect to his potential every moment in his life. Before we reach this understanding that we can connect to our potential every moment or any second in our lives, Every human being goes through the process of crowning seven kings inside of himself. Verse 32. Now, the interesting thing is that the same is repeating here. On every one of the seven kings of Edom, the Bible says, Vaimloch, meaning, and he reigned. Vayamot, and he died. Seven kings, Vayimloch, 
For instance, verse 32, Vaimloch Beedu, and I'll translate literally that you will see the pattern. Vaimloch Beedu, and reigned in Edom, Bela ben Beor, Bela the son of Beor, Veshem Iro, Din Hava, and the name of his city is Din Hava. In Hebrew, let's judge. Vayamat Bela, and Bela died. Every king reigned, and then he died. Reign, and then he died seven times until comes verse 39 and tells us the following in Baal Hanan the son of Achbo died and Hadar reigned in his stead now there is a change in verse 39 Please pay attention to the name of the verse 39 and to the name of the chapter, the number of the chapter 36. I read 39. Here, let's read 39. Vayamat Baal Hanan ben Achbo and Baal Hanan ben Achbo, son of Achbo, died. Vayimloch Tachtav and reigned under him. Hadar, this is the eighth king, Hadar, Veshem Iro, Pau, and the name of his city, Pau, Veshem Ishto, and the name of his wife, Mehetav El, Bat Matred, daughter of Matred, Bat Meizahav, daughter of golden water. So, what do we see? We see a chain of seven kings that each and every one of them reigns and dies until comes the eighth king. What is so special about the eighth king? He has a wife, meaning he turns to another person. He doesn't live by himself or for himself as the other ancient seven kings, but he turns to his wife, he turns to another person. The name of his wife is also interesting, Mehet of Il, the best of God. We are in our best when we turn to another person. Why? Because at this moment we don't think about ourselves. We're not selfish. When a person turns to another person, to another animal, to another tree, to another situation, to another flower, to another bird. He is not selfish. He has a space to relate to another component than himself in his life. And this is the breakthrough of reading this text. The Hebrew sources speaks about seven ancient kings. The seven ancient kings are not historical kings, but aspects inside of us who try to live without turning to another person, to nature, without turning to anybody else but ourselves. All those triumphs to govern alone, to live alone without turning to another person, ends in death. All those aspects in us that are not turning to another person, to another life, to another aspect in nature, are considered to be dead. And this is why the Bible says, Vaimloch Vayamot. And he reigned and he died. Because only when we turn to another person, we are alive. Only when we turn to another cat, to another bird, to another flower, we notice something else beyond ourselves. We are 
alive. The interesting thing in all of this is that we can read this text from down up or from up down, the opposite way. What does it mean when I say that we can read or access this text also from up down? The seven kings of Edom could also reflect thoughts that we have inside of ourselves. They're very concrete. It's clear to us, but we cannot bring them to actualization in the world. So we think, and this is completely a different angle of reading the text. So in this manner, the seven kings are reflecting our thoughts, our trials to think and to bring a thought into action. But since those thoughts are not considered or does not turn to another person than us, they're not trying to communicate, they cannot be manifested, and those thoughts do not have existence. They exist in our mind, but they don't have manifestation. When a person has a thought, like Descartes says, cogito ergo sum, when I think, I'm also, when I'm thinking, I'm also existing. Or the meaning of thinking, the fact that I'm thinking is the fact that I'm existing. This is part of the bargain. The second part of the bargain is, can I communicate what we think or what I think? And here comes the big test. Because when a person tries to explain or to communicate something to another person, he comes from one angle. And we don't know where another person stands in his life, meaning how does he think, how does he perceive reality. It's completely unknown and we're trying to communicate. Communication is a soft skill. So, as we said before, another reading of the text would be that these seven ancient kings our thoughts that we are thinking to ourselves but we cannot communicate them to another person. It is interesting because sometimes we are so convinced in what we think but when we try to speak those thoughts to another person we are stumbling over words, we are mumbling, we cannot express in a coherent, simple way what we think. So the process of speaking is like giving a birth. Usually in nature, we see feminine giving birth, feminine cat, and so feminine doe. But we don't think about the fact that we we are also men and women giving birth when we speak. Every word that we speak is a baby. And in a process of speaking, and not just mechanical speak, I need to go, I need to drive and so, I need to bring things. There's a lot of pain comes with it because we're trying to communicate. Sometimes things that are impossible to speak because they're so ancient. As we said before, and those are two different readings, either the thought dimension and from behavior dimension, we have 
seven upper kings and seven lower kings so to speak together they make 14 or ed those kings are dying they have no meaning because there is no turning of course there are many more readings to the text you just offer two but i give also a third in any new moment which is given to us the seven kings ancient kings that are coming with a new moment which is given to us this is a print so there's the constant shuffling of the potential of the seven comes and also comes the potential with the three in it the seven ancient kings so to speak and the three upper spheres so it's not something that happened in the past or a theory in behavior or theory in communication skills it's happening all the time if we look into our lives we will find ourselves during the day trying to communicate things and not everything comes out clearly not to us and not to the other so we can see all the time this process of the seven kings are coming they don't hold reality and they disappear and something else is holding what is holding and i would like to speak now about the eighth king hadar hadar in hebrew has two meanings one of them is to return and the other one is the name of the fruit that give smell pri hadar is the fruit that gives good smell from the family of citrus like orange grapefruit lemon they all give very good scent their leaves and their fruits whenever we find that there is a good smell somewhere this good smell symbolizes good deeds good deeds according to the ancient wisdom arises good smell whenever there is a good deed against what we do here turning to another person helping another person doing good to planet earth a scent of good smell rising rising up from us the lower to the upper and here the name of the eighth king is Hadar. He is the one who returns, not with the seven lower spheres that gravity holds them, the kings of Edom. In a way, Hadar goes out or returns to the eighth sphere, to Bina. To understanding Hada Hada in us the eighth king in us is Hada he understands that he has to return to the source not to govern others not to make himself important but he understands that everything exists upon understanding communicating and turning to another person this is why Hadar has a wife when there is a husband and wife the husband turns to the wife and the wife turns to the husband they consult they speak they share reviews impressions there is a turning and the name of his wife is Mehet of El, the best of God. When we turn to another person, we're not just the eighth king, Hadal, we're not just rising a good smell, 
we're not just returning to our source, we also are in our best. Mehetav il. Mehetav il. The best of God. There are many books that can be written about this text. There's a lot of mathematics are going on, which in a way I chose not to present this time. We can speak about this text for many more hours. This text is the most engaging text in the Bible because there's a lot more to say about it. But since it's the first time we speak about it, we shall consider it as introduction. Wishing you a beautiful day and wonderful week. Thank you for listening to Bible Stories as Blueprints of the Soul. We hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, comments, or would like to hear more about a certain topic, just write us an email to hebrew at learnoutlife.com. We are always happy to hear from you. For more episodes, videos, and articles like this, please visit our website at hebrew.learnoutlive.com. We also would like to invite you to join our live classes. Just search for Online College of Biblical Hebrew on Facebook and start learning now with students from all over the world. Kol Tuv and Shalom.